morning everyone welcome back to another vlogmas video i am sharing with you today a really fun video and it's one that i wanted to film for a really long time I'm finally getting around to it it is all about my paris and france tbr why do i have a tbr that is completely devoted to just paris books and france books well that is because ever since i was a little girl I've been completely in love with Paris and I don't know how this came about. I don't know why I always wanted to go there, but I just did. Ever since I've been little, out of all the places in the world, Paris was the city that I needed to go to. I remember my father used to say <laughs> that the water was dirty there, that, you know, he just used to put it down, even though he's never been to Paris and I think he was mostly joking. But, um, and I didn't care. Nothing he said could deter me from this love. Fast forward to 2016. And we planned a family trip to France where we spent five weeks there. And the reason we were able to do this is because my husband is, I, I was not working at the time. I was at home with my kids work as a as an at-home mom, that was my job. And my husband um, had an opportunity to work abroad. So we were able to go to France and spend more time there than we would normally have on just vacation because he was able to work remotely from France wherever we were. As long as we had an internet connection, he was working and we were hanging out there. So he did take two weeks of vacation, but the other three weeks he was working. So we spent a lot of time in different parts of France and uh, I, I loved it. I remember the first, we took a red eye to get to Paris. So we arrived at Paris at seven o'clock in the morning after not sleeping at all. And we had to wait until 2 p.m. to be able to get into our hotel which was hard with a, um, I believe we had a five-year-old and an eight-year-old at the time. So you can imagine, very hard to keep a five-year-old and an eight-year-old uh, from not falling asleep on a park bench. But I remember when we walked out into the city after we got off the train from the airport, wandering around, and I instantly felt love. Now, Paris is not super clean. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's a kind of grungy old city in a lot of ways, but it didn't matter to me. I just loved it instantly and felt like I knew I always would when I was there. It was the craziest thing. So that, all that to say that having a Paris in France TBR is a way for me to stay connected to this place that I just adore. And so I wanted to talk you through a bit of it today. I want to talk to you about some of the books I've loved that I've read um, and some of the ones that I wouldn't recommend and some of the ones that I'm most anticipating reading in 2020 because I didn't read any books off of this TBR in 2019. I was just so focused on other things I didn't read it and I feel this longing in my heart both to go back to Paris and France but also to go back into these books because it, it obviously helps that longing in some ways and it enhances it in other ways to read these books, but it kind of scratches the itch a little bit. So in honor of um, talking about Paris and France today, I'm drinking Stash's Tea Christmas in Paris, which I was very excited to try because, I mean, I guess I'm just one of those suckers. If you put Paris in the title, I'm gonna wanna try it. And this is an herbal tea with um, chocolatey flavor with lavender and cool mint. So, mm, yeah, it's nice. Very nice, very soothing. Okay, shall we talk about books? Okay, so before we went to France, I read a ton of books about France, set in France, around the area. Uh, so I've read 22 books that are on this TBR and there's 55 in total. And so I have about 32 that I still have not read. So I'm going to tell you a couple highlights 
um, The Paris Wife by Paula McLean, I loved. Uh, I really enjoyed, and I have not read A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway, but it is on the list, and so I will read it. And um, I am I am not anti-Hemingway. I actually really have liked his writing. I've only read his short stories. I've never read any of his longer fiction or his longer work, but I, I do love his writing, so I'm going to read it. Um, Somewhere in France by Jennifer Robson. Jennifer Robson is a Canadian author. She writes historical fiction romance, I guess you would call it. And this is actually a trilogy. So Somewhere in France, After the War is Over, and I think the third one is called Moonlight in Paris. I haven't read Moonlight in Paris yet, but the first two I read in France while we were in the south of France, and they were great. I really enjoyed them. Very entertaining. I also read All the Light We Cannot See. Um while we were in France, um, and we did go to St. Malo as well. So, you know, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that, I don't think I love that book as much as some people love that book, but I did enjoy reading it. And I did think it was amazing to be able to read it while we were in France. Uh, a Year in Provence by Peter May. I think that's a very famous memoir of France, probably one of the, maybe the most famous, famous memoir. Not my favorite, but it was very good. I did enjoy it. Um, Carol Drinkwater's memoirs of living in the South of France are my favorites, favorites, favorites. I've read three of them and I think I have three or four left. Um, I love her style of writing and I love the life that she's built there and how she shares it. It's just really, really amazing. Um, so I have a whole bunch of books to share with you that I still have not, to, have not read. Um, one of them is The Flanar, A Stroll Through the Paradoxes of Paris, The Mandarins by Simone de Beauvoir, um, Coco Chanel, An Intimate Life. So I, I really, um, the thing about this TBR is that it really covers the gamut. I have biography, I have memoir, I have fiction, I have classical French literature tr in translation, um, and I do speak French, so I could technically read, um, some of these, these books in French. Uh, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if I'm if I'm in the mood. I will, but I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on myself. Either way, I'm just gonna do what feels good. This is like the one of the most fun TBRs that I have. Um, it, it's all about fun. It's all about love, a love and a passion for a place. So I, I'm not. I don't want to force myself to read something that I find tedious. For instance, not gonna read Les Misérables. You can tell me it's great if you want, <laughs> but I'm not gonna read it. Uh, because that is a book that I can just watch the movie for. I'm not interested in, in going through that experience. So just letting you know. Um, so I talked about these the other day in my haul. This is my Poems of Paris, Every Man's Pocket Library edition. Really excited about this. It's so lovely. Um, I haven't read it yet. <clears throat> um, this is Carola Hicks's The Bayeux Tapestry, the, li the life story of a masterpiece. I'm not sure if all of you know what the Bayeux Tapestry is, but it is um, this amazing embroidery that was made to depict William the Conqueror's um, battle as he um, invaded England. And it has got its own amazing life story. Uh, I visited it when we were in France. My husband took the boys and walked around the little village of Bayeux while I went into the museum all by myself. They give you a headset and you just walk around this amazing long tapestry. I, I can't even tell you how long it is, but it's very, I mean, look it up if you're at all interested in embroidery. It's an amazing piece of art and history combined. Um, I bought this book afterwards, but I saw it in the gift store at the Bayer Museum. And so I, I'm definitely getting to this one this year. I'm going to call it now. I may save it for nonfiction November, but um, I just am fascinated by this piece of art. And um, yeah, it's amazing. I um, also talked about this one, Sweet Francaise by Irina Nemirovsky. Um she was a Jewish writer who was taken to Auschwitz when the Nazis invaded Paris, and this book was her precursor writing about um, the Nazi invasion into France and, you know, really, really interested in, um, in reading this and learning more about her perspective on this. 
Paris to the Moon by Adam Gopnik. I'm not sure who somebody on booktube recommended this and as soon as I heard the title I was like I absolutely am going to read this because I read all of the memoirs about Paris and France all of the ones I can find. So um yeah really excited to read this. The Sweet Life in Paris, Delicious Adventures in the World's Most Glorious and Perplexing City by David Leibowitz. Um, this one has recipes in it, so I don't know. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. I don't know. I will read it and I will report back. Very excited about that one. There's a lot of books on this TBR, and I wanted to tell you that my Goodreads, um, handle is in the description box below so if you are also obsessed with France or you also are just curious to see what else is on this list please friend me on there and ha and then you can go and ha have a look at my shelves and it's my France TBR I think is what the the shelf is called and you can go in there and peruse and have a look and the only other thing that I wanted to tell you about in regards to this TBR is I just wanted to tell you that not all Paris and France memoirs and books are created equally. So there are some duds and I've read a few. So I thought I would just share with you um, a few that I've read. One of them is an abridged version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo that I read with my boys before we went to Paris. And it was terrible. <laughs> So I don't recommend it. I mean, it was just the, one of the most depressing stories ever. So uh, obviously I was duped by um, the Hunchback of Notre Dame film that Disney put out. And I thought, oh, I'll read this with the boys and it'll be great. And no, no, it wasn't. Um, Paris, France by Gertrude Stein. I, uh, Gertrude Stein and I are not on the same wavelength in terms of writing style. I... I didn't even, I mean, I don't even know if she actually references Paris in this book. It's very short. It's a little memoir slash stream of consciousness something. I don't really know what it was. I, I don't feel like it's just, it's just not my, my style in any way. I actually gave it to a friend of mine who was living in Paris at the time that we were there and he loved it. <laughs> so, so other, if you love Gertrude Stein, read Paris, France. If you don't, if you can't get along with her, uh, which I don't, I've already tried another book of, uh, to read some more of her work and I cannot, I mean, we visited her grave um, at Père Lachaise Cemetery when we were there and we saw her grave and, and I'm glad that I could see it, but I, mm -mm, nope, I can't read her writing. Um, 149 paintings you really need to see in Europe by Julian Porter. No, I did not enjoy that book. Um, it's basically outlining different arts of works of art that you can go visit in different museums. And so I was, you know, referencing, looking at the ones that he had talked about in Paris. And, and it just, I, I don't, for me, it wasn't worth the, the time that I put into um, reading it. And then Paris, A Love Story by Katie Martin. Um, this one, she was married to Peter Jennings, the American broadcaster, and then she met, she, it's just anecdotes of her life. It, when she, she went to the Sorbonne for school, she met Peter Jennings in Paris, and then she later met her next husband there. And, um, I just, it didn't resonate with me. It, it didn't have, um, it didn't evoke the city. I think for me, if you're going to write a good memoir about France, it has to evoke the city. Uh, sorry, either the country or the city, whatever, whichever place the memoir is in, it has to evoke it. And it has to really connect with a sense of love that I have for the place. And I know that's unfair and it's expecting a lot from a book because not every book can transport you to the place in the way that you want but when the books do transport you to that place it's pure magic and so I can only hold it to the standards of the others if the others can evoke those places and bring me there either return me there or evoke what it is in general and I have not yet gone that is the key 
to a good memoir. So yeah, it's, um, I love it. It's really fun. And it's really good, I think, to have books that are just there to bring you pure joy, pure joy, pure connection, something on a, a more surreal level than um, other books can do. You know, that is that is the key. That's a really important part of my reading experience in general. So thank you so much for joining me today and talking about books about Paris. If you have any that, um, you know, you're happy to, I'm happy to get any recommendations you might have about books that are either set in France or set in Paris. Um, it doesn't have to be, uh, any specific time period is fine. I, I don't, I don't need it to be historical fiction. You know, I, I like them all. Um, and I love to chat to you about that. And um, thank you so much for watching. And I'll be back again with another video.